Saudamos a todos com a paz do Senhor Jesus. Em reverência. We greet everyone with the peace of Lord Jesus. In reverence to the word of the Lord. Should, I would like to invite you to stand up. I'm going to read the gospel according to Mark. Mark 8. Mark 8, verse 34. Mark 8:34. The word of God says as follows. And when he called the people to himself with his disciple also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses, loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. We adore you, Lord. We bless you to be here in your presence for the deliverances. Bless your explanation of your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word of God says Jesus made a call. And the Bible says, many are called, but a few chosen. The Bible says that God does not make any exceptions, exceptions of people, but he called everyone, many. Through his son Jesus, he called the multitude, and he also called his disciples. the world and the church the ones that follow him and the ones that is still not following he called them all calling to himself the multitude attracting to him and the bible says come to me all you that are weary Take my yoke as I am tender and humble. So we see that God calls everyone through his son Jesus to bless the mankind. To remove the heavy yoke that is upon the man naturally and to deliver him from the damnation, eternal damnation. So he calls them all. And when they are attracted to Jesus, he then deliver a word to, to them and to the disciples. And the word was, if anybody, whoever desires, so it's not an obligation. You're not obliged. I am not obliged. Nobody's obliged. God gave something special to mankind, which is the free will. You can choose who you serve. When you take the Old Testament, you see that God put before man a choice, two choices, the tree of the good and evil and the tree of life. At the desert, God put before Moses two mountains. One, there is blessing. The other one, it's a curse. Choose for the blessing so you can leave. Jesus he was arrested. And with him, there was a man, Barabbas. He was a criminal. And Pilate was used by God 
And he addressed the multitude and the disciples and the Pharisees. And he put a choice. Do you want Christ or Barabbas? A servant on the past called Joshua. He came to the people and said, Choose who you want to serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So there is a choice. If anybody decides to come, and this verb, to come, here is not static, but it's a continuously. Whoever desires to come, salvation is not static, but it's dynamic. You have to believe in Jesus and follow him. And you will be saved. If you keep in the, the, in the way, if you keep believing, if you keep serving him. But if you don't believe, you don't need to do anything. You're already damned. Some, sometimes it looks simple. Whoever desires to come after me. If Jesus presents himself now before us, everybody will lift up the hand saying, I want to follow you. When, when I was young, I used to go to some evangelical churches. I was very problematic. I was difficult. And I, I'll go there with second intentions. I was youth. I want to see the ladies, the young ladies. But to... To please the youth, pastor sometimes asks, if you want to accept Jesus, come to the f in front. And all the, the weekends, I'll go. But I'll never change my life. Never have my life changed. So whoever desires to come after me, you want to accept Jesus as a Savior, everybody will say yes. And if you look in the Bible, in the Word of God, you're going to see and scribe some that has a deep understanding about the Scriptures. He approaches Jesus and, and says, Whatever you go, Master, I'll follow you. Jesus look at him and say, The fox has their places. The birds also has their, their nests. But the Son of Man do not have a place to rest his head. If you want to follow me, wherever I go, but in your life, there's no place for me. In your heart, there is a fox. In your mind, there is a, a bird. Feelings and thoughts that was not according to the eternal life, and that, pleased, that didn't please God. So there was no place for that man for Jesus in that man's life. And uh, how can we serve God this way? How can you s follow Jesus? If originally there's no place in my heart, in my mind, in my life, if it's already occupied with things that does not please God. God is holy. And the advice from the Lord is, be holy because I am holy. Then a disciple approached and he says, Follow me. But he asked, First, let me take my father to the cemetery to bury my father. And Jesus says, Let the death bury the deaths, and you follow me. He would like to serve Jesus, but first he will. He wanted to take care of his sentimental life, emotional things. It, it might be reasonable because only your father and mother, right? But first he wants his father to be dead before he followed Jesus. So Jesus says it's not like that. The moment is now. If today you hear my voice, Do not make obstacles to serve God. If the Lord has called you, 
So the word says that there was a youth, very polite, and he says, Good master. To impress Jesus, he approached like that. And Jesus asked, Why do you call me good? There was nobody, there is nobody good as besides God. So he gave a word to this youth. And this youth asked, What can I do to acquire the eternal life? So Jesus says, Do you know the commandments? Do not kill, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor father, mother, and the neighbor as yourself. So the, the youth promptly says, I already do that since my, my young age. So many people think that they might be saved by the good deeds because he kept the commandments. To keep the commandments is something more than an obligation. If you are doing what you're supposed to, you did what are you supposed to. But if you do not follow, so it doesn't matter. Do you want to be perfect? Sell everything you have. Get rid of it. And give it to the poor. And you, you find treasure in heaven. Then you can follow me. What do you mean? What do you think it means to sell everything? So I have to sell my yacht, my airplane, to follow Jesus? No. Jesus is explaining that you should make it an exchange. You have to leave the terrestrial values and exchanging for eternal values. It's to understand that there's no greater treasure that you can acquire but the treasure in heaven where the moth will not destroy it and the, 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 the thief will not steal. And this youth left sadly because he had many possessions. And he, he gave more value to his own belongings than the eternal things and things from heaven. So the first commandment is love your God upon everything. So he loved more his own things. And he was a good fellow. So Jesus says, whoever desires to come after me and does not leave behind mother, father, brother, sister, cannot be my disciple. And whoever cannot take his cross and follow me, he cannot be my disciple. Now it's complicated, isn't it? Andrew and Peter. Andrew and Peter. They used to fish and they were like trying to catch. And Jesus says, come after me. And they left the nets and they follow him. James and John as well was in the boat with the father, Zebedee. And Jesus called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father, Zebedee, and followed Jesus. Matthew was a tax collector. And he was in charge of the finances of the kingdom of the Roman Empire. And Jesus approached Matthew and said, follow me. And the Bible says that immediately he lifted up and he followed Jesus. Certa vez havia os servos, senhores, estavam comendo a fazer uma festa. 
During a certain night, they tried all night to fish, didn't catch anything. In the morning, Jesus approached, but Jesus told them to throw the net in the right side, and there was a big fish that day. Do you know what, G what the disciples did? They left those fishes and followed Jesus. You know why? Because the resources, without Jesus, they will finish. They did not follow Jesus for the benefits only, but for the love of Jesus. The things that they are desiring was the things from eternity. If someone expected Jesus for this world, is the most miserable man. So the verse that I read, whoever desire to follow me, it's conditional. You go if you want. But there is a reward if you follow Jesus. For example, Peter once asked Jesus, we left everything to follow you. What can we acquire with that? a hundred times in this world and eternal life. So he says, Peter, you that had the choice, you will sit upon thrones and you judge the twelve tribes of Israel. So, in, in Revelation, shows 24 thrones, 12 places for the disciples. And Judah was not one of them. So, the Bible says that there is a reward to follow Jesus. Whoever desires to come after me, Let himself deny. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. And what does it mean to deny himself? It's to love God more than you think your parents, your family, and everything. It's an unconditional love. It's to love upon everything. To deny yourself is to renegade your self-trustfulness. -trust Some people believe in, in technology, in science, and the psalm says horses, which means your capacity, your, your own endeavor, your strength. Some will bend down and fall, but we will make sure we mention the, the Lord the host of the of the armies, captain of the hosts. So you have to stop trusting yourself and trust God. So you are capable. You are this. You can do it. I can all things in Jesus Christ. Here, God talks about re, uh, to deny yourself. Understand that you have no capacity in yourself, but in God you will be able to. It's to let behind all your trust in yourself and to depend only and exclusively on God. is to give up on your own desires and interests. And now what? Whoever desires to come after me, give up on your own dreams, objectives, and plans. And he says, Next, 
And besides, deny yourself is not finished. If you want to follow me, deny yourself. Amen. But now take up your cross. This morning, Pastor Zidouchi was talking about that. Sometimes we think our cross is a relationship. It's a complicated relationship. Sometimes you think it's a, an infirmity. It's a work. He's making a joke about uh, a stigma from his state. <laughs> and we work because we need. We, we don't like to work. Sometimes we think it's our wife, right? And maybe the wife might think it's a husband. But who is that cross? Or what is that cross? If I make this with my arms, what did I do? I made a cross with my body. So I am my cross and I am the cross. My own cross. What is the man is complaining? Complain the man about his own sins. When someone is complaining too much, he's talking about his own flaws. He's talking bad about himself. It's showing that he is the problem. And we are problematic, indeed. So you are your own cross. You are your cross and all your cross. And that day, in the days of Jesus, when Jesus says, take your cross, everybody understood immediately. You know why? Because constantly people were being crucified. So Israel used to all the criminals who crucified. The Romans know they are elite. They are considered good people. But the Jews, any sin, the Romans will condemn them and will send them to the cross. So when you say, take your cross, it's because a cross is the, the instrument of execution. So if you're going to die, you're going to take the instrument of your death. Isn't that what they do with Jesus? You're going to die and you're going to carry your own cross. So we can attach you there. So the cross, it is related to the curse to the eternal damnation. Everyone, take your own cross. Your own sin, your own struggles. Deny yourself and take your cross and follow me. But there's something interesting here. Jesus he left the splendor of his glory to come. And now he said to you and to me, you have to deny yourself to go. And there is a, a praise song that says, so I can leave. He died. And for Jesus to live in my life, in your life, we need to die on ourselves. I was dead and I thought that I lived. Now I live and with Christ I have died. You see the, the correlation? Jesus died so I can live. Now I have to die so that Jesus can live in me. So that is the meaning of the cross. Deny yourself and take your cross. So Jesus took a cross that didn't belong to him. Jesus carried a cross that was not for him. But he, he took that as on himself. He took all the responsibilities. In Isaiah 53, you see what he done. He took upon himself all the, the pain, all the sins. He was afflicted, wounded and oppressed and the sin that caused peace was upon him and he took upon himself our sins he removed the damnation that was upon us the sin that was upon us 
through the Calvary, the cross and the Calvary. He carried the cross until his death. Galatians, first, 20th. I am crucified with Christ and I do not live myself, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live on flesh, I live in the faith on the Son of God, which loved me and surrendered himself for himself. Now the question. Someone here would like to follow Jesus. Those are the criteria. Some people think, I accepted Jesus and it's done. No, that is the first little step. The second is to go after him. It's not in go in front of him, to go behind him. He is the way. And you're going to follow his steps. Looking at Jesus, author and finisher of our faith, is to follow Jesus. Christian means the one that follows Christ. To follow Christ, knowing that he's the way, he's the truth, they're going to produce life. So if you, someone want to follow, you're going to come after me, follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, which is yourself, and take your responsibilities, straighten your life before the Lord, because if you like to save your life, if you wanted to save your life, you have to lose your life. Me, myself, I don't, I cannot do it. It's not from money, from the richness, from my endeavor. Salvation is a benefit that only God can give. If someone is trying to save his life, going to lose it. But if you, if you lose your life for love of Jesus, and the gospel of Jesus Christ. What, is the, what does the Bible say? He will save his life. And this is the desire of the Lord. That we stop living our fleshy desires to live the gospel. Salvation is transformation. Whoever I was, I am not anymore. And I am not what I used to be. So this is our cross, because we n will never find the statue of perfect man unless when we see our Savior face to face. So we're going to renounce, we're going to deny things of this world to inherit the eternal life, the project of God, salvation. It's not a large door. It's not a very large via. It's a straight, it's a very narrow door. It's so narrow that you have to accommodate yourself in a way to go through. And sometimes people think salvation is a joke. No, it's something serious, complex. But that's why many are called and few are chosen. The chosen one is the one that made the good choice to deny themselves and take the cross. Amen. Let's sing a song.
Aleluia. Praise the Lord. The Lord has shown a man and a gift through the Holy Spirit. This man is has his heart wounded, divided, hurt, anguished. And during the service, the Lord has shown that he, he asked for help to be restored. The Lord showed that it is his desire to restore, to rebuild, or to fix this situation. God is the God of the reconciliation, restoration. This is what God is trying to say to you tonight. So whatever have hurt you, whatever has divided your heart, whatever caused this, this crack, the Holy Spirit is the one that can console you. And if you trust Him, He can bless your life. You were called to come unto, to Jesus before Jesus. It's necessary to deny yourself and to take your cross and to keep following Him so you can acquire eternal life. I'll say something to the brethren. If you don't deny yourself, certainly you will deny Christ. So not to deny Christ, you have to deny yourself. Have that clear in your mind. If you not if you not know yourself, you will do it with Christ. And the consequence is, whoever deny me before the men, I will deny him before my Father which is in the heaven. So not all that says, Lord, Lord, who enter in the kingdom of God, but the ones that do my will. Amen. Let's be standing. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Lord, we adore your name. We bless you. As for your word tonight, you have prepared for each heart tonight. We bless you, Lord, for this precious moment in your house. We thank you for as for it's good to listen to your word that comes from eternity for your people. That's why we like to to magnify your name and bless you for everything that you have done for us. You take care of the ones that are seeking you in spirit and truth. We thank you because of your goodness. Our tears are not tears of sadness, but it's because we can feel the truly presence of our God among us. We thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit among us. For the privilege to feel your presence among us. We love you with all our hearts because since the day that you have called us and we make ourselves the chosen ones, we have gratitude in our lips and we are joyful people for this great blessing. How good it is to serve you, O oh Lord. How marvelous, how wonderful it is to see your deeds among us. Our greatest richness is the assurance that we're going to live with you forever one day. Stay with us and never allow us to leave this path that goes in direction of eternity. And the greatest price was paid for your son at the cross. We are a joyful people that follow you. We are part of this redempt the, the word of the Holy Spirit. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Father, we adore you for your grace, for your favor, for your mercy, for the call you have made, for the death of your Son at the cross, for love to all of us. Blessed be your name. As your Son had died but resurrected, and it's alive among us, and one day will come to rescue us. We want to glorify you for all these people that came tonight. And we would like to ask you that you can keep us under your protection, giving us experiences, deliverances, and victories. Bless your, your children in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say the grace of our, your Son Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the consolations of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to remind everyone that next Sunday we're going to have a special event, Gospel Without Borders from Florida, and that will be taking place in Pompano Church. People from Orlando, Hallandale, Sarasota, all over will join us that day. We're going to be together in our Sunday school teaching, so you are invited if you are visiting us. This week is the noon service prayer so whatever you are by noon take a moment to make some intersections for our neighbors so the lord can save them and we can find grace in the invitations if you want a prayer and assistance stay give us a signal and we go to you to pray with you pray for you and to you all peace of the lord jesus